Hey there, fellow creators, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios, and this week I'm going to do some sketching and some studies of some pictures I took while I was on vacation a couple months ago, because I've been meaning to do that, and it's about time. So I actually was out at Michael's today, picked up a little watercolor pad, and that's what we're doing, so stick around. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you guys a way to sort of do small studies and sketches uh, with usually just sort of sometimes ink, sometimes just pencil, but I thought it'd be fun to do it with watercolor today on a small pad. Uh, it's a good way to give yourself an idea of what uh, the general composition and color without really worrying about detail a whole heck of a lot. So as I mentioned in the intro, this is a little watercolor pad I picked up. I was wondering on Michael's uh, this morning mostly killing time, but I was like, you know what, this is the perfect opportunity to do some uh, small watercolor studies of my vacation photos. Uh, now I'm not going to do a ton of them, there's 15 uh, in the whole pad, I'll do maybe two or three for this video, uh, but I feel like this was a good opportunity here. So I've got my photos off to the side uh, on my tablet, I'll just show you in a corner here somewhere what I'm uh, uh, actually working on, that way it'll be a little easier for you guys and you'll actually be able to see what uh, I'm thinking and where I'm going with these. So to start things out, before we even touch any watercolors, uh, I do want to grab a pencil and lightly sketch out uh, just some stuff here on, on my page so I have a general idea of what I'm painting. I'm not just walking in blind. Also, if you're doing anything with watercolor, it's important to have a nice solid sketch before you get started. Uh, considering that watercolor is or transparent. So I've got myself a 4H, sort of my go-to sketch pencil. Uh, and I'm going to have a look. The first one of these uh, is actually a vertical piece. I saw this uh, ivy growing up a tree. I thought, well, this is really interesting. I definitely want to uh, do something with this. So I'm going to keep things relatively simple. I'm trying to capture just essentially the idea of the of the image. I'm not going for a direct one-to-one. -one. In fact, the looser it is, the better it probably will be, uh, both artistically speaking as well as uh, for my own future reference. Okay, so that's about all I really need. It's, I'm sure that's very light, uh, not something that you guys are going to really be able to see super well. Uh, but it's just enough to give myself a little indication of where things are. Glad I grabbed that eraser because that initial line was way too harsh of an angle. Fun angle for my paintings, not so much for a, uh, a, a quick study. Let's give this a couple extra little finesses here in terms of where the branches are. And that'll be good. Okay, so for this, I decided, uh, since I'm working super small scale and I do need to practice with it, it uh, would be worth grabbing my, uh, my Etcher Half Pan set that I reviewed uh, a, little, uh, a little earlier, later, a um, little while ago. Um, now, I did, since I did already show you guys the photos, I want to bring the, my, um, my palette into frame here, because uh, I know you guys really like to see that. Uh, more so than the uh, the picture itself. I might find a way to do that in in post, but uh, I know you guys probably care more about the uh, what I'm doing with color mixing than I am uh, just showing the image. I uh, also have my just regular glass of water here, although I do mix in a little bit of the uh, two of the core mediums, the watercolor medium and the synthetic oxgall. Uh, and those two are just, um, it's like just those two, uh, but like a dropper full of each mixed the water to help some, with, with some uh, both mixing capabilities of watercolors as well as to help with the flow and absorption into the paper as well. So that's at least when I'm, when I'm working with watercolor and doing something more serious like this, uh, that's what, what I go with. So, I'll also get my color chart out because there's too many colors here, too many to choose from. So I think I'm just going to start out making sort of an off-white for some of the, the background sky stuff. Uh, I don't need a ton, but I do need enough to not make it completely um, completely blue, because it wasn't. It was actually overcast that morning. Um, I'm thinking, uh, yeah, 
probably the, I think this is the ultramarine. Yeah, that tot that's totally ultramarine, okay. Yeah, just a tiny bit of that with our white to offset it. There's actually not a lot of visible sky here, it's mostly in between the branches and everything. But. I do want this to lean definitely more realistic than I would often otherwise do for a piece, since it is a study after all. Even, like, even that's probably too much blue. I'm also not sure how I'm going to edit this. This is like if I don't cut some of this down or, or throw it in time lapse, I, I have no idea how long it'll end up being. Um, but I will do my best to give you guys the highlights anyway. Um, really, I just, I'm, and at this point, I'm just kind of working as simply as I can with uh, very little, very little actual color and very little water. So I'm, I'm just really kind of damming up doing a lot more uh, wet on dry techniques here because I do want to, uh, I do want this to look decent. Now because I want the tree to stand out, I'm going to probably use more uh, grayed out tones in the background, uh, where it, which doesn't, which is not what the photo looks like, but it will make more sense and make the, uh, the foreground pop out a little bit more. So I want dark brown, which I think is a, yeah, it's a black plus like an umber or something, which I'll use. We're getting most of this, I think. And, I'll, and if, for any kind of color mixing like this, it's really vibrant. Um, and I, I will be, you know, diluting with the water, of course, but uh, I want to really mix with my complements as well. Uh, so mixing with a red or even a, uh, there's a quinacridone in here. So there's a, let's see, green. I lose these colors so easily. Actually, this, this pinkish color which is uh, actually, it looks like it's a, a violet, like a quinacridone violet or something. This with a little bit of that green, it's gonna gray that out to something really nice. And just brown it, yeah, that's perfect. That kind of, well now, okay, now we're actually too brown. That's better. This would be everything, everything that's not the tree. So it's, it's a actually it's darker. The the, tr the the main tree is yellower. So actually that's better that it's this color. Yeah. See that's good. It's a lot more grayed out. And with watercolor as a whole, you always kind of want to work lighter to darker because it can't you can't lift it I mean you can lift it but nowhere near to the extent that you would need to um, in order to really kind of get this to work right uh, otherwise so if you go if you go straight in with the like all of the color you need immediately uh, then it's like oh well now it needs to be lighter it's like well you screwed yourself because you don't know how watercolors work um, Yeah, really keeping keeping it less saturated and lighter, and then slowly build that up. And I'll be the first to admit that uh, when I'm normally when I'm working with watercolors, I um, I move way too quickly with them, 
and it, things end up looking terrible very quickly. Um, it's important, it's, well, with any painting process really, is to take your time and relax and uh, you know, let yourself have some fun with it. Painting really isn't designed to be done in all in one sitting, at least usually. Um, unless you're doing like a Bob Ross painting, in which case that literally is. It's just like, oh, here we go, we did a painting in like an hour. Um, but uh, if, if you want your work to, to stand out, to look pretty good, take your time, slow down, really think about where you're putting your lines and your strokes, and uh, you'll make better stuff. I feel like that's pretty good for our backdrop. Um, I do want to work some grass in, in behind this tree here. That I'm going to go ahead and let be a little bit more saturated. But I still want most of that to come from the, uh, the tree itself and a lot more of that contrast. So I'll still, still brown it out a little bit. Not as much. I can I could probably afford to use a bigger brush, but I'm gonna go ahead and just stick with this one because it's important to really see that you don't need a giant brush, especially I mean if you're working on a scale this small, you shouldn't be using a, a larger brush regardless. What's interesting about watercolor is this is actually what is what it was essentially designed for was for artists to be able to do quick like field sketches and stuff with it. Um, Although, you know, any any artist is going to take that a step f further and it's like, nope, this is my choice media and this is exactly what I'm going to do with it. In fact, I, I would come to think of it, not, not even just uh, watercolors, but watercolors in and of themselves are um, limited in that way. Uh, markers were invented to replace watercolors as being a fast version of watercolors. So uh, it's, it's really uh, interesting to see how art has evolved uh, through the course of history that way. Yeah, paper's starting to bow a little bit more now. All right, that's reasonable. I'm actually not super happy with the way this is sitting up in here, but it's kind of already dry, so I'm just gonna let it go before I screw it up. So the tree itself actually isn't super brown. Actually, I probably should have adjusted that in the backdrop as well. Uh, it actually, almost at least with the exposure and, and white balance of, of my phone camera, it actually looks a lot more gray. So I do want to play into that a bit uh, as I'm mixing here. Actually, since this this brown actually has a, some black in it, I shouldn't need to add additional black to it. I should just need to add the white to keep it uh, on that grayer side. Yeah, it's pretty good. That feels pretty good. Uh, I want to get yeah, a little more of that darker brown. Just to get uh, s just some of those darks to stand out a little more. Also give me a little bit more bark-esque <laughs> branches. Trees are never one solid color, it's always more streaky like that. I'm 
also setting up my shadows for the uh, where the leaves and the, and the and the moss is, is casting those shadows onto the the tree itself. Whatever, whatever little, little branch that sticks out or wh where it comes through, I'm, I'm putting a little bit of extra, a little bit of extra paint, a little bit of, of dark in there, seeing that that's where that's gonna cross over and, and where the individual little nubs and things on the on the branches stick out. And this whole section that's way darker. Okay, now the fun begins, because now we can actually start putting the green in, which is going to make the entire piece uh, a lot more distinct. So the sort of the front slash back of this tree has a lot more of a deep green to it. Uh, so I'm going to start with a deeper green in here, and then when I start layering the, uh, the other green up top, uh, the bright stuff, is, I'm gonna, it's going to make that stand out more, at least side by side. I'm not going to be taking light over dark, but I, I do want to be sure that I'm working from back to front in terms of composition. And that's something that is really important with any kind of painting. Uh, I see a lot of people, a lot of times, will do like a whole figure or something and then try to be painting around their, their arms and their face or something. Um, and then it ends up looking almost blurry or, or the lines don't look right. They, they're like wavy lines and stuff because you painted the background second rather than first. Um, one guy, thing you guys will see me do a lot, especially for uh, larger canvas pieces, if you watch the painting process videos, is I'll do a sketch either in light pencil or usually these days in paint marker, but that's really just a guide, and I'm, I usually cover that up within the first layer of paint anyway. So it's like, why do you sketch it out? It's like, because it's there to give my, me an idea of what I'm doing. Uh, if I need those lines, I can always re-sketch on top of the paint, uh, but uh, trying to essentially paint by number it, the, pa the painting in the long run ends up looking uh, messy rather than uh, complete. So, yeah, I really like this, uh, this emerald green, or not emerald green, leaf green is, is this one I've been using. Uh, but there's also the lime green, which I'm probably going to use more so for the, um, the upper sections. Um, so I think for this, it's going to be a mix of this leaf green which is, what is this one? This is a PG-17. And then follow that up, uh, at least when I'm mixing lighter anyway, uh, with some yellow and some of the other green. But yeah, this I want just a touch darker. So I'll use that, I'll use that violet, that pink violet a little bit to just tone that down. Okay. And now back to smaller brush dabs. I am covering up a little bit of the background stuff, but not a ton. Well, kind of a ton. Just to see where these, where the upper parts of these branches were all hanging down. But I also needed, I needed that stuff in the background to be there, so when I do this, uh, you see some of that stuff showing through. Paper is really starting to jump on me now. This is exactly what I was talking about too now. So, so I'm essentially painting what's behind the tree and I already painted the tree. It's not really something you want to do. It's, it's a little more forgiving with watercolor than it is with something like oil or acrylic, but you do run into that problem a bunch, um, especially for uh, a larger scale piece. But again, this is a study. We're, we're, we're allowed to bend the rules and make some mistakes. But the thing is now, see, I've lost my ske initial sketch for where the, um, th these background leaves came in. And I, and I did really lightly put those in, in the initial sketch, but at this point, it's, it's just a matter of uh, generally figuring, figuring out where those were. And it's not one-to-one -one in terms of scale. My, my photo is actually a bit longer uh, vertically. So everything's chunk, chunked down a little. So it, not, not everything is going to be 100% accurate anyway. And at this point, I'm not really looking at oh, like 
super overall shape. Like I'm look okay, I'm looking at the overall shape of, of the tree in the photo. But in terms of the strokes I'm making, I'm allowing that to be a little bit more expressive, a little more freeform, just using the shape of the brush to, to create sort of these interesting textures and things with it. Wow, that's basically sap green. Holy crap. <laughs> that's a good mix. Uh, yeah, and, ju and just, you know, letting, letting myself play a little bit. Uh, my hands do have a natural tremble to them, so at this point when I'm working this way, I'll actually hold the brush a little tighter to accentuate that tremble uh, and, and make myself uh, shake more, uh, creating essentially more and more uh, brush variations uh, in, in, my, uh, in my strokes. All right. So I'm going to mix the leaf green with some of the lighter green. I'll have a, like an upper, upper highlight layer. Um, or less, less so much layer as, as upper, upper highlight. But I do want to mix this and, and get the, uh, the, uh, that ivy section coming up the tree. And then sort of the, the very tips, the frosted tips and everything. <laughs> frosted tips. <laughs> what is this, 1999? Um, Uh, will be uh, more of that pure lime green, probably with a little bit of uh, like a lemon yellow or something in there uh, to, to really make those pop and stand out. Yeah, but I want to make a much lighter green than I've been using for sure. Uh, for the climbing ivy up the tree. And again, you can... It's watercolor, you can always go darker, you can't go lighter. At least not, maybe without some gouache and, and, and heavy layering. But, um, and I'm keeping the paint a little bit thicker for this now too. Uh, both, both to cover up the white as well as to uh, make the, eye, like the, the green stand out a little bit more too. Uh, not just in contrast, but in, in uh, the thickness of the paint. It is kind of why I prefer tube watercolors more than the pan ones, but uh, you can still get it thick if you just work it the right way. Okay, I do want to tone this back down a little. So I'm noticing some of the areas, especially in the photo, and I'm, and at least the way I'm working with the brush, I need to do, see, do seem to need some underlying shadows here. There's a little too much of that white poking through. And I got I got a little too much water in here. It's a bit it's a bit wet. That's gonna bleed more than I wanted it to. That's what I get for dipping that brush, right? <laughs> gotta work wet, or gotta work dry, drier technically. Yeah, so that's that's a lot more distinctive now, and that really that really jumps out. And any any of the little darks I'm putting in here are just gonna amp up that contrast. Even going back to that regular leaf green. All right, that works for me. A little bit of that out at the base. Okay. Now, tell you what, for the first time, I'm actually going to grab a slightly larger brush. And I, very, I do say slightly because, I mean, we're coming up maybe... Not much. Um, mix more of that, more of that leaf green, but a lot more of the lime green. Because now we're going to get almost to our brightest now. Okay. I'm just gonna keep dropping in these uh, little little dabs of brush, uh, little brush dabs here. Just working as I go.
Okay, so this is actually ended up taking me a lot longer than I uh, anticipated. Um, but I also was a little bit more liberal with my brush strokes on this, uh, some of these other corners here. But I feel like that's pretty good. Also, based on how this is turning out, which is pretty decent actually, I may actually come in with a, with an ink pen or something and, and, and really come in and, and define these shapes a little bit more and, and have a little more fun with it. Um, but for the time being, uh, that feels really pretty good. Um, didn't really leave the space I, I wanted it to for my other highlight layer here, but real fast. Just get that with some of that yellow. And really amp that color up. Just for a couple little couple little upper highlights on the right hand side where the where the light was coming from. Also at this point I really do need to wait till this dries before I really start doing more to it. But, that is a nice little study. <laughs> um, that was sort of the point of this little demo today, is to show you guys that there's other ways of, of practicing besides sketching. Um, and playing with different techniques and things like that. And a quick little watercolor study. Well, quick. This was it's probably about an hour now. Still, though, um, there's a reason why people take, you know, that, that have you know water water brush pens and a smaller half pan set that they travel with because this is a very enjoyable way uh, to capture both uh, the general composition of a particular um, <laughs> particular or scene or or what have you um, without really doing too too much in terms of um, having a messy, messy cleanup or anything like that. Like once this dries, you just pack it back up, throw it in your bag, and you're good to go. Um, so I hope uh, you guys have enjoyed this and you know found the tips that I've had as I've been working useful. Uh, again, this, was, I, this isn't so much a tutorial this week. It's just a project that I'm working on, and it's not quite a vlog either uh, because it is a lot more active with what I'm doing. And uh, certainly, again, been trying to keep you guys... Uh, interested and entertained with some tips and, and tricks and my, my thoughts while, while working on this little guy. Um, if you want to know more about these watercolor set, this watercolor set in particular, this is the Etcher, uh, the Etcher Lab uh, 24 half pan set of watercolors. I did a review of these on the channel, uh, which you guys can uh, check out as well. If you'd like to see more uh, my crazy or fantasy landscape stuff, uh, be sure to subscribe and check out, uh, I'd say, the backlog of the painting process videos is a good place to start. I also have a second video I want to record this week, so I, I want to get to that as well. But, I feel pretty good about that. So, I'm going to go ahead and take this guy and rip it off and set that aside to dry. So that is going to be it for this week. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this, be sure to hit that like button. Let me know your thoughts in comments below. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this that I, I it's, a, that it's a little more slower paced and you get to see me doing something uh, beyond the regular acrylic projects as well as uh, giving you some tips along the way. I know this was a little bit little different this week, um, but I feel like this is a process worth showing and worth... Uh, keeping you guys inspired to try things out that you might not have otherwise thought of. Uh, so like something small scale watercolor piece like this, uh, if that's at all interesting, uh, let me know your thoughts and comments below. Get subscribed if you're not already. Uh, and this has been uh, from Cinderblock Studios reminding you to keep on creating. And I will see you guys next time.